Now that we have access to all the dynamic data for this project, we're going to have to wire up the rest of our animate composition to take advantage of this. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go into our slider element here. And let's actually go in through the library and just double click on that icon within slider sim. And you can see that we're now within the slider symbol itself. So what I'm going to do is actually zoom out quite a bit here so we'll be able to see kind of what's going on. And we've got this rectangle here that we initially created for this project. And let's rename this. I'm going to call this image holder 1. All right. So I'm going to actually copy and paste this. And an easy shortcut to remember if you need to duplicate an item in this fashion is just to hold down your, your Alt key and then click and drag. And you can see it, it actually creates a perfect duplicate of that. And it calls it image holder one copy. I want to call it image holder two. And there we are. So image holder two is set to negative 800 right here. And image holder one is set at zero. So we want to change that a little bit. So we're going to select both of these images and move them all over here. So basically, we've got them backed up two in a row. So one at negative 1600 and one at negative 800. The next thing we'll do is actually add some labels here that we can address. So to do that, you go timeline, insert label. In this first one, we'll call slide in. And we'll just keep that at the zero point here, the beginning of our timeline. And at one second in, we're going to create another one. And we'll call this one rest. The next thing we'll do is actually animate these guys here. So let's activate the pin. And we're going to shift this over to probably around halfway. And then actually, let's move that all the way over to 1. And what we're going to do is with both of these selected, we're going to shift them over so that that first image is actually going to be within our symbol viewable area. All right. So we're going to shift this entire transition down a bit. And we're going to transition the rest of this from 4 over to 5 seconds. And what we'll do here is complete this transition by having that second object actually within the viewport. So let's disable the pin. And you can see that things come sliding in. They hold for a while, and then the next one slides in. Now there's an additional label we want to put over here at about four seconds, and that's going to be called slide out to represent where we're actually sliding out. So there we are. All right, so two more things we need to do within the symbol instance itself, and that's to add some triggers. So to do that, I'm going to add a trigger down at around 3 seconds, 0.75. So I'll click in my Actions layer, Insert Trigger, and that brings up our Trigger Actions panel. And what I'm going to do is actually invoke a function up onto the parent timeline, so it's actually the main stage of our composition. And to do that, I'm going to say sim dot get composition. dot get stage and that'll get a reference to our stage then I'm going to call something called grab new image and grab new image is something that we have not created yet on the stage we're going to do that next so there's the first trigger and then the second one is going to be way down at five seconds so I'll insert a trigger and it's going to be very similar. We're going to, again, get composition, get stage. But this time, we're going to set 
old image. And what both of these do are basically populate either image holder one or image holder two. So let's go back up to our stage and we'll click on our code panel to view our code. And within our creation complete event, that's where we want to establish these new functions that we're creating. So I've actually got them copied into a notepad here and I'm going to paste them in to make it quick and easy. Okay, so here is our grab new image. So we're gonna cast this onto sim so that we're gonna be able to actually access it from the stage. We're gonna set it equal to a function. And then within that, we're going to increment the current image by one. So that's our index. And then we're gonna check to see if current image is greater than four. And if it is, we'll reset that back to zero. So that way we'll have this continuous loop. And then for the part where we populate the image, we're going to populate inside S, which is our slider symbol reference. We're going to populate image holder 2, the CSS property, and we're going to inform background-image and set a URL to the value of image array, the current image index, and the image value from that. So that's going to create an image within that rectangle. We're going to do a very similar thing for set old image. So right below that, we attach to this symbol instance set old image as a function. And here, right away, we're setting that background just as we did before. And we're basically setting it to that same image. Then we go through and on the image title itself, we're going to set the HTML which is the text basically, to the current image title. And then we're going to set a timeout. Set timeout is basically a JavaScript timer that's going to go through. And here I'm delaying it for 500 milliseconds. And I'm just saying I want to delay this. And then once those milliseconds have passed, inside of my slider symbol, I want to play the label rest. So there's two more things I need to do, and that's to actually set this up for initialization. So going back into our get JSON, as soon as my stuff is all loaded and parsed through, I want to add something here right below where we set the image title initially. And that is to set image holder one CSS background to the actual current image that goes with that title and then jump immediately within my slider to play rest. So let's save this and we will preview. So file, preview in browser, and there it is right away. And you can see as it's scrolling through, it's actually changing both the image and the spirits. So what's happening here is once something new is loaded up, it actually duplicates that particular image and creates a new one here. So in this lesson, we've seen how to get our slideshow up and running through use of that data and through symbol instances.